a day or Christmas and Christmas is the celebration of birth of Lord Jesus Christ and tomorrow is the celebration of the birth of Prophet Muhammad it's beautiful 24th of December a birthday of Prophet Muhammad and 25th of December Christmas birthday of Lord Jesus Christ two things are really significant in Quran regarding Prophet Muhammad number one وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Any Prophet Muhammad is blessing on two legs for the whole of universe. So Prophet Muhammad is universal blessings. Now it is a different issue, although Prophet Muhammad is universal blessings. But Muslims of our times are doing totally the opposite of what they should be doing. They should be winning the hearts of people through their character, through the message of the Prophet. And they should have been manifesting if they had Islam inside them how beautiful the religion has been and how compassionate and merciful the Prophet Muhammad has been so this is one point about Prophet Muhammad which Quran uh, clearly tells the world and number two is about the character of Prophet Muhammad. Innaka la ala khulqin azim. The most sublime character possible. It's a beautiful character. When you are in the surroundings of Prophet Muhammad, you will feel the vibes of love emanating from Prophet Muhammad. But the irony of today's world is that Muslims are completely cut off from Prophet Muhammad. 200 years ago, Wahhabis changed the religion of Islam. And this change was so ugly. As a result of this change, Muslims were spiritually and morally devastated because their connection with Prophet Muhammad was tarnished, completely cut off, and love for Prophet Muhammad, which historically have been the principle of their faith, was removed from their practice. And since love of Prophet Muhammad and connection with Prophet Muhammad was abrogated or taken out from their practice. Muslims were not Muslims anymore and their religion was not Islam anymore. After this change, Islam disappeared Wahhabism emerged under the label of Islam. What people practice today as Islam is not Islam. It is factually, actually, by all definition, purely Wahhabism. Islam is like a dead body who has been beheaded. The head of the body of Islam is love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
these Wahhabis, this organization, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, Taliban, they're not just beheading people. They have beheaded the religion of Islam. Let me repeat. These Wahhabis, these terrorists, these enemies of humanity are not simply beheading people, but they have also beheaded the religion of Islam. They killed the religion of Islam without love of Prophet Muhammad. Islam is a body without head, without love of Prophet Muhammad, without connection with Prophet Muhammad. Islam is a body without head. When love of the Prophet was removed from the <clears throat> practice of Muslims, they forgot love altogether. And ever since this new and ugly and stinky ideology of hatred and death from Saudi Arabia emerged, Muslims do not talk about love. Muslims talk about paradise and Muslims talk about virgins in paradise. Look at their Islamic scholars. Their scholars give you lectures on how beautiful will be the virgins in the, in the paradise and they describe the curves of their body and you know they really become overwhelmed with the with the idea of entering into paradise and jumping on 70 virgins this is all their islam is about the islam which was established by prophet muhammad was a beautiful religion was a wonderful religion this area Arabian Peninsula was inhabited by people who knew nothing for except war, bloodshed, holding grudges, cutting each other's throat and burying their daughters alive. The coming of Prophet Muhammad in Arabian Peninsula was a greater risk taken by God. Had Prophet Muhammad been sent to any other region of the world, people would have benefited from Prophet Muhammad's presence and from his teachings and from his character at a scale that I personally cannot imagine of. Prophet Muhammad is an amiable character, a wonderful, a masterclass, masterpiece creation by God. And I love his character. He is such a sublime character that you will not need to make an effort to love him. You will love him. You will fall in love with Prophet Muhammad without making an effort. You know, you know, like, like us lots, we have so many bad things in our character. If I want to love you or you want to love me, there are so many flaws in me which will come and deter you from loving me. And then you will have to convince yourself, ah, no, he is bad, but he's good as well. So you will convince yourself and you'll make an effort in order to love me. But when it comes to loving Prophet Muhammad, it's involuntarily love. Your heart will volunteer to love Prophet Muhammad because he's such a wonderful character. Islam is all about Prophet Muhammad. Without Prophet Muhammad, there is no Islam. Now, what is what could be the impact of Prophet Muhammad's love on his disciple? The love that you have for Prophet Muhammad will make you so much absorbed in him 
that you would want to imitate Prophet Muhammad, his inner and his outer, to perfection, that you will begin to behave like Prophet Muhammad does. If you fully imitate Prophet Muhammad, you will never ever in your life hate anybody. You will never ever in your life kill anybody. Because Prophet Muhammad said, killing one man is equal to killing the entire humanity. If this is the understanding of Prophet Muhammad about human life, about value of human being, just imagine when you completely imitate him, will you ever kill any human being? Will you ever hate anybody? As we mark the celebrations of Prophet Muhammad's birthday tomorrow, we should ask ourselves, are we simply saying we're the followers of Prophet Muhammad or should we take a lesson and learn from his character and learn from his life, the way he lived his life? When he was a husband, he was a wonderful husband. As a husband, he was a wonderful husband. And as a granddad, he was a wonderful granddad. And as a friend, he was a wonderful friend. He was a wonderful friend. And as a neighbor, he was a wonderful neighbor. No matter his neighbor was a Christian or a Jew, Prophet Muhammad couldn't sleep without making sure that his neighbor has eaten food. And if his neighbor has not eaten food, Prophet Muhammad would take food to him and will see that he is eating the food and when he sleeps, he is not empty stomach. Now just imagine if you completely imitate Prophet Muhammad in and out, your character will be entwined with the character of Prophet Muhammad. A new character will evolve from your personality. And that character which will evolve after you have acquired a thorough imitations of the Prophet Muhammad, that character will be known as a Muslim. You just recite the kalama with the tip of your tongue and you think you're a mumin? No. You're an idiot. You give people the wrong interpretation of the Quran. You don't follow Prophet Muhammad. You don't follow God's words. You just follow your desire, your carnal desire. You follow your ego. You follow your nafs. Your Lord, your God is your nafs. Remember what Quran said. Qalat al-Arabu amanna. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلُوا الْإِيمَانِ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ You simply recite the kalama and you're holding a flag that says kalama. If you're holding a flag that says kalama, do you think you'll become a mu'min? No. Holding a flag that reads La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah will never make a mu'min out of you. In order to become a mu'min, the kalama and its light and its nur have to enter in the perimeters of your heart. And only then will evolve a character and that character will be known as Muslim. But this will happen when you will imitate Prophet Muhammad. And I say this to ISIS the messed up mentality of these people. You know, the Quran says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ قُلْ Tell, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you want to love God, فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then imitate me. If you do not imitate Prophet Muhammad, you can never love God. And those who have excluded love of Prophet Muhammad from their practice, they can never be Muslim. They're idiots, they're killers, they're terrorists. They are not Muhammadans, they are not followers of Prophet Muhammad. Do you hear me?
قل ان كنتم تحبون الله tell them if they want to love god you should follow me you should imitate me you should dye your heart in my color قل ان كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني tell them if they want to love god they should imitate you ان کو کہہ دو کہ اگر یہ اللہ سے محبت کرنا چاہتے ہیں تو تیرے رنگ میں رنگ جائیں تیرے رنگ میں رنگ جائیں تیرے متی ہو جائیں تیری کم مکمل اتباع میں آ جائیں قل ان کن تم تو ہبون اللہ اف دے وانٹ ٹو لو گاڈ فت اونی ٹیل دم فالو می امیٹیٹ می اینڈ دے ہیو ایکسکلوڈیڈ پروفٹ محمد امیٹیشن اینڈ لو ہاؤ کین دے بی مسلم دس از اے بلیٹنٹ لائی آن دا فیس آف دا ورلڈ that these idiots who call themselves Islamic State, they're not Islamic States. They are killers of Islam. They're killers of humanity. The enemies of humanity. They're messed up people. Alas, the people who lived in Arabian Peninsula didn't avail much from the presence of Prophet Muhammad. Even in front of Prophet Muhammad, people who were in the very close proximity of Prophet Muhammad, like Umar bin Khattab, idiot. He refused to listen to Prophet Muhammad. He did not know the protocol of Prophet Muhammad. He refused. He said the book of God was enough for him to see guidance from. He was a complete idiot. And all these Muslims today who talk about killing people, terrorism, they're all idiots. They're not followers of Islam. They are ugly Wahhabis. But let me pay my love and homage and salute the blessings upon mankind. Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran said, Ya ayyuhul lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidana wa maulana, Muhammadin wa alihi wa ashabihi. We love him and we will continue to love him because he is lovable. He is lovable and he is blessings upon humankind. Although the Muslims have barred humanity from becoming a recipient of the blessings of Prophet Muhammad. However, as soon as the awaited one, Imam Mahdi Sayyidina Gahar Shahi alayhi salatu wasalam, returns to his, this world, this world will begin to enjoy all sorts of bounty, all sorts of blessings from His Divine Grace, Lord Rariyaz Gohar Shahi. And He will benefit all humanity on, beha- on behalf of Himself and on behalf of Prophet Muhammad also. Namat <laughs> أعيني يوما نامت والحنين نما راحت تحت ويني رؤياك يا رسول الله أحمد يا نور الهدى بشوق Oh, oh, oh.